Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. Uh, today we're looking at Psalm 114. Uh, and this is a shorter psalm, but it's a psalm that, that harkens back to some stories. Uh, and I think we all have those stories we tell, those family tales, those uh, historical moments that we tell and retell for generations. And this psalm reflects back on some of those for the Israelite people. And what are some of the things that they went back to and remembered? Uh, and what was the reason for that? See, 114 says, When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange language, Judah became his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. It says, The sea looked and fled and Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams and the hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you flee, O Jordan, that you turn back? O mountains that you skip like rams, O hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turns the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a spring of water. Now, this is a very uh, artistic psalm that uses a lot of imagery of, uh, of inanimate objects uh, performing like animals or people and, and a lot of things expressing. But, but what I think about in this is some of the power that God has over the earth. And that's what this psalm is reflecting us back to, of, of thinking back on the power that God has, and it should cause us to tremble at his great power. Not as a, a fear like he's going to destroy us, but just to sit in awe of how great he is. But I was thinking about some of the miracles that God did in the Old Testament that had to do with, uh, with nature and the things that, that he had dominion over. And this isn't an exhaustive list, but just some that, that I was thinking about. And it starts uh, just with some of my thoughts of, uh, of, of the plagues, the 10 plagues in Egypt to, to help lead Pharaoh to release God's people uh, to go on their journey to the promised land. We have these, these plagues, of, of these 10 events where God shows his power over all these different aspects of creation. Then they get into the wilderness and those miraculous signs continue. Uh, scripture says that they were led by this giant pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. Uh, and I've seen some artistic renditions of that pillar of fire, and it would be awe-inspiring. But then uh, even in the process of getting there, God stops up and parts the Red Sea and allows them to continue, and Pharaoh's army is consumed by the waters after them. They, they start to struggle with food, and God uh, allows manna, bread, crackers to fall from heaven each day to provide for the people. Uh, at one point, they're needing water, and uh, Moses is commanded to strike a rock, and fresh water comes from a rock, uh, which is, I think, what uh, the end of verse uh, 8 here, who turns the rock into a pool of water, is thinking back on. As the people are about to cross into the, the promised land, God again stops up water, this time for the Jordan River, to allow them to, to pass through on dry land. Uh, as they continue and are, are, are in the process of, uh, of just fighting for the promised land, at one point Joshua is leading the armies and trying to overthrow Gibeon, and, and God commands them to, to have the sun stand still, and for a day the sun doesn't move, so they continue in battle and win the victory there. You, you fast forward far further into the future and, and you see that again, uh, Israel is in a place of captivity. They're in Babylon. Uh, Daniel and his friends are there and, and things that, that God again shows his power over the laws of physics. Daniel's friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are thrown into a fiery furnace and there they stand and are exited. They're saved from that condemnation because of their faithfulness and God. God shows power over that. God shows power uh, when he uh, allows Jonah to be swallowed up by a fish and spit out on dry ground three days later. Jesus shows power when he calms the, the seas that are raging and the disciples are afraid they're going to drown. God continues to show power all throughout scripture over the earth that he created and always to help his people, always to bless us, always to provide for us, but always to have us see his power and worship him because of it. I don't know if you've seen anything miraculous like this. I don't know if you've witnessed something like this, but we have God's word to tell those great stories of what God has done so that we can sit in awe of his power and worship him as a result. So today I pray that you would sit in awe of God's power, not over creation, but even just in our life and the ways that he works, provides, the ways that he's willing 
to do the impossible to show he cares and loves for us. Hope that you have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.